We're joined now by Hall of Famer and TU All-American Jerry Ostrowski. And Jerry, thanks for jumping into the eye of the hurricane with us. And, you know, as an offensive lineman, an offensive line play is the antithesis of what we're all doing, which is this social distancing thing. So <laughs> how are you doing on that? <laughs> um, it's interesting. I, I, I like, if I could do like, if I could do nine-year-old distancing, it'd be even better. Um, I've got twins in the house that we're, we're homeschooling, so it's a, it's a little bit different. But no, things are going well. Um, just trying to stay busy, training. Uh, was lucky enough to get a, a weight room set up in the garage before all this went down. So we're just trying to stay busy and, you know, and, and just, you know, live life. Jerry, uh, taking you back to your history, uh, why did a PA kid, a Pennsylvania kid, choose Tulsa and make this, and then eventually make this city your home? Uh, it was, it was the people. I mean, when I came down here, I, I noticed that this this place is a lot like where I grew up. I mean, there's a lot of tough, blue collar, hardworking people in the city of Tulsa, and um, I related to, to you like I and, and Tulsa, the city of Tulsa, like I did back home. And uh, I told my father I'd never been on an airplane before. And uh, the first time I was on a plane was my recruiting visit. And I told him, I said, if I fly down here, I said, I had options to go to Pitt. And there was no way in the world I was going there because I was a Penn State fan. Uh, they wanted me to walk on. I had a couple other offers. I told my pop, I said, we're going to go to If not, I'm going to be a Delaware fighting blue hen. So uh, it just ended up where I really liked Tulsa. Like I said earlier, I related to the people because they're a lot like like where I grew up. How long did it take before you thought to yourself, hey, Tulsa's a pretty darn good place and uh, it might be a place I'd like to stay? Oh, probably less than 24 hours. And uh, <laughs> that was because uh, as soon as I got off the airplane, I met the likes of TJ Rubley and, and uh, Rich Wales and some of the guys from the team. And we had a pretty good first evening uh, in the city of Tulsa. So it was, it was a good time. So I really enjoyed it. And, um, you know, I knew after my four years here that no matter where I ended up playing or if I did play, I was going to end up being in Tulsa and that was going to be uh, where I lived. And, uh, you know, you've talked about the garage and, and your setup and trying to, to, to continue to condition and have folks continue to condition out of your garage. But how much different is the strength and conditioning uh, in nutrition uh, today as opposed to when you were playing? Uh, I cannot believe what we are doing as a, as a program right now, the amount of work that's coming out of the weight room, uh, not only from Eric Anthony and his staff, but also Julia and what she's doing with nutrition and, and getting our players, the nutrition they need and, and getting them the correspondence they need. I mean, how many times a week they still touch base. Uh, it's amazing what they do because once again, I've, I've said this from day one, uh, we pay head coaches and coordinators a lot of money. Um, our strength coaches deserve just as much because they nobody handles our athletes more in four years on a on a campus than our strength and conditioning staff and the ones we have at our school. I'll put them up against anybody in the country. And the way people approach nutrition and eating and all of that, I'm sure it's vastly different than in 1988, 89, 90, whatever. Oh, there's no doubt. I mean, it was nothing but steaks and baked potatoes back in the day. I mean, there was none of this. Uh, do you, we were lucky to get somebody to come by with some water, let alone bring us some fruit chews and a banana at a, at a break in practice. I mean, breaks, what were those, Bruce? I mean, that was a sign of weakness, right? Um, I mean, the closest thing we had to food when I, when I practiced was you got to smell the pies cooking down at Bama Pie on the corner of Delaware and 11th. I mean, that was about as close as we got to food. But, no, it's amazing what they do for the, for the athletes nowadays. And you can see it. It's why they walk on the field and they – you take a freshman and in 18 to 24 months, you look at them and they look like completely different people. It's because the science of today's uh, 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 strength and conditioning nutrition is just so vast to where it used to be. What was the journey like for you uh, from being drafted and then eventually being able to uh, get on the field with the Buffalo Bills? What was that journey like for you? Uh, uh, it was a tough journey. I mean, it was a, a journey of, of doubt. Uh, it was a journey of uh, challenge because, you know, coming out of college, I was a first team All-American. Uh, I don't get picked until the 10th round. And they don't even have that round anymore, Bruce. They only go to seven. And uh, went to Kansas City, was released, came back here, went to Atlanta for a cup of coffee, and uh, they released me and then ended up in Buffalo. Uh, I told the story the other day. I give Steve August a lot of credit because I was working with Augie 
uh, he was working in marketing there before all the computers and everything. We were basically cold calling businesses, trying to get advertising for programs and games. And he just looked at me one day, he goes, what are you doing here? I go, well, I'm doing a job. He's like, well, he goes, just look, he goes, you can still play. He goes, you should be playing. Don't give up. And, um, you know, I told him that the other day, I thanked him. I found an opportunity to thank him because it's true. And uh, Buffalo came calling, got on the practice squad, was able to work up there and uh, eventually ended up playing. Jerry, is there a lesson that you can teach younger players about maybe not giving up no matter what the circumstances? I, uh, I've become pretty close recently with, with Willie Hill, and I know you're going to get an opportunity to talk to Willie here in a little while. Um, and we were talking about this today. And it's, it's the fact that you have to learn through adversity. Uh, all athletes learn f- through adversity. You know, we have a, a lot of parents nowadays, I guess the new term parenting is snowplow parent. They push everything out of the way and make a smooth path for their kids. And you know what? Kids have to learn. They have to learn through, through uh, trial and error. They have to learn through, through different things in life because I'll still say, you know, athletic ability is important. Um, we put all this stuff on size and strength. To me, still to this day, if you have a tough football team, you will be successful. Toughness is more important than anything you could possibly have. If you can measure, if you can come up with a test, Bruce, to find out how tough a person is, you, you're going to have something. And uh, I learned that in Tulsa. I mean, we're, we were a tough football team. It was, you know, we're the smallest Division One school in the country. Um, we don't have the assets that a lot of other people have. But that doesn't matter because what we do have is great and we love it and we love TU. And we love being around one another as teammates. And we were able to, to build that toughness and, and go through adversity. And I think that's how you have success. And when you, you know, I, I talked to Willie about it today. Um, I love where he is in his career right now. I think he's getting ready to blow up. And, um, you know, it's just what it's about. You've got to be able to, to survive. And you've got to have toughness about you or you're not going to be very successful. Well, in 1989, you, you played in a bowl game, you went to a bowl game, and then in 1990, you go three and eight, but then the following year, you're 10 and two. So was there a change in mindset? Was it the fact that TJ got injured early in the 90 season? What was the biggest difference there? Well, I love, I love Gus. I consider Gus a very good friend. Um, but yes, at that point in time, we had a guy like TJ who ends up getting drafted in the ninth round and and, or I can't remember, I think it was ninth round in place for, I think, about eight years in the NFL. When you lose an NFL quarterback, that's pretty shocking. Um, and we didn't have kind of a leadership behind him. And I think what happened over that three and – what is it, three, would you say, three and nine season? Three and nine, um, yeah. It was um, – we learned how to rely on one another. We, we, we learned that some of us needed to be better leaders than we were. And we handled the situation um, – you know, differently because we didn't have that guy. We didn't have TJ anymore. We didn't have the guy that started all those games, started as a true freshman. And um, our team got together and kind of steeled ourselves through that season and set up the next year. And then, you know, all great seasons have a little bit of luck in them. And, of course, as you know, we had a little bit of luck in that one. And uh, next thing you know, we're ranked, what, 21st and 22nd in the country and playing in the Freedom Bowl against Marshall Falk and San Diego State. What was your most memorable moment as a player, Jerry? Uh, Being in the huddle on the south end of the field, getting ready to kill the clock because A&M just muffed a kick and Billy Culver covered the fumble. And uh, we're getting ready to shut the door and win 35-34 against A&M, who was 13th ranked. I think that still to this day will be be my, uh, my best memory. Pretty special. I was, it was amazing because not only was it a, a huge win at the time and, you know, before cell phones and Twitter and everything else, all night long you could go in and watch those games on ESPN and your score was going across the bottom of the ticker, the bottom of the screen, and it was there all the time. But it was the fact that we were such good friends. And uh, this was a team of guys. That, it was kind of like, uh, I don't know if you remember that, um, the year without a Santa Claus, that uh, the, the story you see on Christmas. You know, we're kind of like the group of misfit toys. I mean, we had a bunch of guys from all over the place. We had option quarterbacks who were playing defensive end, uh, former middle linebackers like Chris Bratcher that are now playing nose guard, uh, basketball players like Way Casey played tight end. So it was just a group of guys that just loved to play and were, were tough-minded guys that came together and did something great. What was your most memorable moment as a student? As a student, 
yeah. getting out of finite math. <laughs> The, the greatest hurdle in the history of my degree would be finite math. And I, I love sharing with you this day. If you're listening to this, God bless you. If you're still around, thank you. Thank you for allowing me to get out of finite math. <laughs> uh, in uh, October, a couple of years ago, a year and a half ago of 2008, your, uh, your number was retired. Your 55 was retired. What was that moment like for you? Uh, it was, it was, pretty surreal because when you have kids and my kids weren't ever really able to watch me play football because we had kids a little bit later and to be able to have the family there and my, my nieces and nephews and my, my own kids, you know, my sons and my daughter and to be able to, to see what I did at one point in time, that was pretty special that, you know, you know, before the knee replacements and, bad limps and everything else that their dad actually was pretty good at something. Well, we had 55 on the field, uh, and this isn't Canadian football, but it was special to have 55 on the field, wasn't it? Oh, it was pretty cool. I still have the pictures. It, it Tulsa is a special, very special place to me. I mean, there, like I said before, there's a reason why I still live here and reside here. Um, that campus at 11th and Harvard is special. And if you, you get to put the time in, and you get to go, if you get the opportunity that someone tells you you can go to that school and you make the jump and you go there, your life will change if you allow it. You really will. It's a special place. And, you know, it, it, this is a question that I think I know the answer to, but uh, it's been over, what, over 30 years since you decided to come to Tulsa. Would you change anything? I wouldn't change a thing. Not not one deal. I wouldn't. I still wouldn't go to Pitt, Bruce, because they still <laughs> Um, no, I wouldn't change a thing. I, I would, I would do nothing, nothing different. I would sign up tomorrow if I could. Jerry, thank you so much for taking the time uh, in the eye of the hurricane and, uh, stay safe, my friend. Hey, you guys stay safe too. Thank you very much, Bruce. I appreciate you very, very much.